Hello and welcome today to uh, Global Sports Care. I've got the pleasure today to introduce um, a friend of mine, Dr. Tom Crisp, um, who is now a retired sports physician. He practiced in London and as the subject today is um, what are high volume injections, how do they work, and Tom was involved in this um, uh, development, um, I invited him around to talk about this. Hi, Tom. Hi, Marcus. Thank you very much for inviting me on this. Um, yeah, so a little bit of background. Uh, I came from a background, uh, a very sporty background, but probably not at, at, at an elite level. But uh, uh, I was a GP and set up a sports clinic in Chelmsford in 1982. Uh, realized how little I knew, so I took time off to get a degree in sports medicine uh, and then left general practice in 1990 to work full time in, in sports medicine. And uh, uh, I can now look back on my career with a great deal of pleasure. I've traveled the world and called it work. But uh, today we're, we're going to talk about the, the Achilles tendon. And this dates back probably 20 years uh, 20 years ago, there were a lot of people with recalcitrant Achilles tendinopathy that were having operations. And a group of us uh, were sitting around discussing, um, you know, what what could we do about it? Um, you know, there was the, the standard physiotherapy that had been developed uh, still further by um, Hakan Alfredson and his uh, eccentric loading exercises, but there were still quite a large number of people who didn't respond to that. So um, we, we thought that uh, when the surgeons operated, often what they did was to uh, strip off the paratenon deep to the tendon. So the first thought was, well, is that possible to do it with maybe an injection uh, under ultrasound? And um, Otto Chan, our radiologist, pointed out that you couldn't actually see the uh, paratene on, on ultrasound. So that was a non-starter. But we thought it was worth a try uh, to strip off tissues from the paratene on instead. Uh, and um, we had a go at it. There was a patient of mine that was uh, very reluctant to go for surgery, who was a, a long time runner and hadn't been able to run for several years at this stage uh, and wanted to try anything. So uh, under ultrasound guidance, we put a needle in deep to the tendon uh, and injected um, a small amount of volume to start off with. And decided um, that probably the best way of judging the success at the time of the injection was to see the effect on the neovascularity, which is uh, almost always there in, in tendinopathy. Um, so we, we tried a small volume of fluid. There were still vessels there. We carried on and found that about 40 mils with her uh, was enough to, um, to make the near vessels disappear. Uh, we've since found that if we inject 50 mils, then that works for just about everybody. Uh, and that includes um, the first 10 mils of Marcane, uh, obviously a local anesthetic. Um, and we got her back to running within uh, three or four weeks after the injection, having not run for two weeks, uh, two years. So uh, she was very pleased. It's a very simple, quick uh, procedure. It is uncomfortable, but it's it's not really painful. Uh, and along with that, we've in, uh, developed a very strict post-injection regime with a very short period, three days of, of rest, followed by a gradual reintroduction of the, or introduction if they haven't had it before, uh, eccentric loading, before a return to sport, um, depending on the symptoms, the sport, and how long they'd not run for. Um, but I mean, an example of that, we, de we deal with a lot of professional footballers and they were returning to full training within, within two weeks of the injection. So uh, a, a very successful uh, injection. Um, how do we do it? Um, I'm going to uh, see if we can share the screen and show a few slides. Um, if we do that, 
Um, so that's uh, a picture of the ultrasound being um, performed. You can see the ultrasound head and the needle going in uh, deep to the Achilles tendon. And that's that's quite important. And it, it goes in at roughly the area where is where there is the most near vascularity, but also the most thickness. And usually it's also where there is um, maximum tenderness. So uh, uh, that's uh, a, a picture of the ultrasound uh, itself. And that's uh, just to clarify the outline of the Achilles tendon. Uh, and um, there's a needle. So this is a little video that I hope will play. And you can see the needle coming in from the left-hand side of the screen. And it is very, very close to the Achilles tendon. Uh, and that's placed there. And then you can see the water being uh, injected there. Um, it's not into the tendon. It is very much just outside the tendon. And the needle is moved backwards and forwards to make sure that the fluid is um, uh, injected all the way around that posterior aspect of the, uh, the Achilles tendon. It takes a few minutes. It can be uncomfortable, as I say. The, the biggest thing, though, is they, they get the feeling that the, the ankle is about to explode because 50 mils is, is quite a, uh, a large volume. And while we can uh, reduce the pain sensation, we can't uh, alter the, uh, the stretch sensation. So uh, that's what it might have looked like before. It's a rather extreme example with a lot of um, near vascularity in the Achilles tendon. Uh, and one hopes that that's what it looks like uh, afterwards. Uh, so that's a very short description of the, um, uh, of the procedure itself. Uh, they get after that uh, both verbal and written instructions as to, to what to do uh, and um, referral to one of our physiotherapists that are part of the team when it's possible. A lot of the professional footballers clearly have their, their own club physio uh, and they are given instructions, but they rest just for three days and then start the eccentric loading uh, at that stage. Three, week, three days after that, they can start non-weight bearing exercise and they return to uh, impact exercise gradually, but around about 10 days. And depending on how long they've been inactive for, they may well return to, to training at about 14 days. So that's the procedure. I think that is that fairly clear, Marcus? Absolutely. And I think um, the, the next question is um, the discussion do we actually know how it works? That's a very good question. Um, no, no, we don't. And, and the cynics will tell us that uh, the only reason the uh, near vessels disappear because uh, of a, a pressure effect. Um, that may be the case, but one of the interesting things is that the morning stiffness that almost all people with Achilles tendinopathy have disappears just about immediately. Uh, and doesn't come back. So we're doing more than just pressing on these vessels. So the theory is that we're removing the vessels and the nerves that we know travel with those vessels. Uh, and so in a way, denervating from the bad nerves. Now, it may even be that the, the marcaine has a, a neurotoxic effect to a degree and, and helps that, but it certainly enables them to do the uh, eccentric loading and the full rehab program um, much more effectively. And, and it seems to work. So who do we do this for? Um, largely it's for people who have failed conservative treatment. So they've had the eccentric loading, they've had the uh, obvious predisposing factors corrected, um, they, they will have um, had general look at their, their gait, possibly um, looking at uh, tightness in, in the calf muscles, etc. Uh, but they haven't got better. Um, we've even done people who have had uh, surgery and, and other treatments and have failed that. 
So it, it's uh, that's the sort of uh, situation. Clinically, there should be tenderness of the tendon. Uh, usually worse when the tendon is relaxed, but much less when the tendon is stretched. This is what we call the, the London Hospital sign, and that, that has been validated as a consistent sign of degenerative uh, tendinopathy. Um, in terms of ultrasound, there should be neovascularity, there should be thickening, and there should be the degeneration uh, signs, the, the loss of the, um, the, the fibrillar pattern on, uh, on ultrasound. Probably the biggest thing is to differentiate those that have an acute onset, because that can indicate a partial tear, which needs to be treated very differently. So it's usually a gradual onset. Um, and uh, uh, as I say, it's better to, to choose those that have failed conservative treatment. But there are some people who, uh, whose tendon is just so tender that um, doing the eccentric exercises is too painful. They certainly can't do the full quota. Uh, and that's probably not an unreasonable uh, uh, reason for doing it. Um, in terms of, of the evidence, uh, I've said that there's, there's, there's not a lot of evidence to, to, to explain why it works, but we've performed several scientific studies that have been published, and in our hands, about 80% return to sport uh, after the injection. Uh, more recently, there's been a, a multi-centre trial uh, involving uh, workers in um, Barcelona and Copenhagen, uh, amongst others. And that's also shown a benefit from, from this treatment. And that was, uh, you know, level one study. So it's, it's, th there's good evidence that, that it works out there. Um, the near vessels, as they disappear, they don't tend to come back, which is, uh, different to, for example, the polydocanol injections that some people have used, where, if anything, the neovascularity uh, is increased. Um, risks. We have seen no significant increase in the risk of tendon rupture. Um, there is clearly a risk of rupture if you're dealing with a uh, degenerate, therefore weakened tendon. Um, but uh, there's certainly no increase uh, post-injection uh, that we've seen. We have a tiny risk of infection. We do it as a sterile procedure, as you saw in that picture, you know, um, gloved up and, and everything done uh, sterilely. Um, but the risk of infection is, is very, very low. Um, and that com uh, compares very favorably with, with surgery, where uh, there's a high risk of infections, a high risk of um, skin not healing, etc. cetera. Um, added to which this uh, involves a very much um, quicker recovery time and return yeah. to sport. And um, would you say Achilles tendon is the main indication or are there any other indications you think of um uh, this is used for and has some evidence um we we use uh, in, in this way uh, for tendinopathy so we have used it for patella tendons um in in hundreds of cases with i have to say slightly less success than with the achilles tendon um, I think the use of, of a volume injection has has more wider um, uh, relevance. You know, thing, things like um, tenosynovitis, I think you put in quite a large volume into a tendon sheath um, and that seems to work. Um, high volume into the, the tennis elbow, that, uh, though that can be, can be quite, uh, quite painful. But the, the main one, the, the, this is a treatment we devised specifically for uh, Achilles tendinopathy. And uh, the big worry, we, we started off using um, 
a small dose of hydrocortisone, 25 milligrams of hydrocortisone. Now that is a very tiny dose when you think it's diluted in 50 mils of, uh, of fluid. And we did that really for, for practical reasons that, that aren't uh, too relevant here. Um, we were aware that some people would um, shy away from an injection of any steroid at all around the Achilles tendon. So we've since um, compared with and without corticosteroid. And there may be a small initial benefit, P perhaps the small amount of hydrocortisone damps things down a bit quicker than, uh, than without. But the long-term results are little different. Uh, and I have to say that what, while I'm not practicing anymore and uh, until I uh, retired, I was using no steroid unless there was a particular reason for, for doing differently and um, with, with, with good success. Great. So in summary, you would say high volume injections in particular for mid portion Achilles tendinopathy in patients who didn't respond to conservative treatment rehab. Um, this is certainly uh, a procedure to um, consider uh, next to the, the rest of the toolbox. Very, very much so. And, and, you know, it can be considered relatively early in the elite sportsmen who cannot do their job. Yeah. So um, I can only say from my experience, I learned this procedure because it does have the uh, effect you described that patients uh, wake up the next morning and have no morning stiffness they've had for years and then they can rehabilitate so and i think that was one reason why we did this video today so uh, i think do you've got anything other to add to this no i think you know the, probably the most important thing is to confirm the diagnosis with an ultrasound because there are other things i haven't gone into the differential diagnosis but you know things like accessory soleus and and um deep bursas and such like and it certainly is not as effective for uh, insertional tendinopathy, um, where, where I think it is uh, very much more difficult to treat. But um, as I say, an, an ultrasound scan is essential uh, to make the diagnosis. Okay. Well, I think then I would like to thank you for your time. And um, again, um, thanks for taking the time and thanks for explaining it to us. It's been my pleasure, Marcus. Thank you.